Okay, so a lot of people are actually going to get this problem wrong. Not because they don't understand the concepts, it's because they don't know how to manage this problem. And of course, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just one second. But uh, if you can do this problem, and of course we have three and one half squared divided by two and one third squared without the aid of a calculator. Put that thing away. All you need is this supercomputer that's located in between your ears. This is so much better than any artificial intelligence out there because this is the real deal. That's actual intelligence. But uh, let's see how you do with this problem. Again, we have three and one half squared divided by two and one third squared. We're not going to use our calculator. And if you know how to do this, or if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I will show you the correct answer in just one second. And then of course, I'm gonna show you how to properly manage this problem step-by-step step so you can get the correct solution. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you're having any difficulties in math or if you just want to learn math for any reason, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, let's go to take a look at the answer. Again, if you're not ready to see the answer, just pause the video, but let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. And the correct answer is nine fourths. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. And if that is the case, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified expert in fractions, powers, uh, order of operations. They'll just be like, wow, you must be a math genius. And you could say, well, indeed I am. I watched that guy on YouTube. He teaches me a lot of stuff. Anyways, if you didn't get this right, don't despair. This is not that difficult. And uh, it's likely that some of you didn't get this right because you didn't manage the problem correctly. That's what I kind of indicated uh, in the beginning of this video. And I want to uh, kind of um, take this opportunity to tell you or to remind you of something you already know, okay? Math is a language, okay? So here is mathematics, and here is, uh, let's say, English, okay? If you want to tell a story uh, in the English language, okay, or verbal, any verbal language, you would, uh, are going to do what? Well, you're going to just say, hey, once upon a time, this and this and this happened, uh, da, 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 the end, right? You're going to tell an interesting story from beginning to end, right? Mathematics is the same thing. You have to manage the solution. So we start off with the problem or a question, and we got to tell the story one sentence at a time until we can get to the solution or answer, okay? And knowing how to tell a story in mathematics, it takes discipline, okay? It takes discipline, focus, and you got to create these good habits. If you don't um, you know, create these good habits, these good academic habits when it comes to mathematics, you're going to cause yourself problems and difficulty. It's not good. So if you truly want to be uh, great or improve in mathematics, this is the first place you need to start is to, one, just realize, hey, you know what? I need to be neat and organized and structured because I am speaking a language, right? Just uh, just think of, you know, um, this is no difference uh, no different than like an English class where you have to write essays and things like that. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and see how this problem is going to be solved. And the first thing we need to consider is the proper order of operations. So we can break out our favorite saying, which is PEMDAS, okay? So P-E-M-D-A-S, there's a uh, lovely little mnemonic, which is a memory aid that goes along with this. That is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, Please excuse my uh, dear Aunt Sally. I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. So what is this all about? You might be saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're, you're telling me this phrase. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. Okay, so in mathematics, you know, we have to uh, consider the type of operations that we're dealing with. Now, uh, a mathematical operation would be something like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, things like this. These are mathematical operations. And 
anytime you're looking at a problem with different operations involved, you need to start thinking about the order of operations. And that's what PEMDAS is. And what you want to do is use this little acronym as a checklist from left to right. So let's quickly go through this. So P stands for parentheses. You want to do everything inside parentheses, uh, but really that uh, is stands for grouping symbols. So that could be like brackets like this or squiggly brackets like that. So that's where you start. Now, I'm going to quickly go over PEMDAS, but you need to really practice the order of operations with much more challenging problems uh, other than this one. Right? This is right here is mm, yeah, like a, you know, if I had to give this a, a temperature flavor, mild, medium, or hot, this would be like a medium level problem, right? You want to uh, do more challenging problems to really get the order of operations down. Okay, let's move on to E. So after you've done everything inside parentheses, you want, you want to move on to E, and E is effectively a power. So if I had like two to the third power, this little three up here is called the exponent, okay? This two down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So E really stands for exponents, but you can think of it as powers. Okay, so M, D, and A, and S. M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, S stands for subtraction. So I did say this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So most of you might be saying, well, okay, uh, I'm going to do multiplication next, and then division, addition, and subtraction in that uh, strict order. That's not the case, okay? So that's not the way the rest of this... Uh, um, kind of rule um, or checklist works. So what you want to do is break these up in two groups. So M and D is actually multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if I see multiplication, then division, I'm going to do it this way. If I see division and then multiplication like this, I'll do it this way. So whatever I see first from left to right, and the same thing holds true for addition and subtraction. Okay, so now that we know that, we can look at what's going on here. I have division, I have powers. So what am I going to have to do here? Well, I'm going to have to take care of my powers first, right, before I even uh, consider doing anything uh, with division. So that's what we're going to have to do. Remember, we're not using a calculator to solve this problem other than the one in between our ears. Okay, so as we uh, discussed... Now, with the order of operations, I'm focused in on taking care of these powers, right? What's inside parentheses? So what's inside parentheses are really nothing to do. There's no number operations here. But I'm going to have to be thinking about, all right, got to take 3 and 1 half, square that, and 2 and 1 third, and square this, okay? And you don't necessarily have to work from left to right. You could just do these independently uh, on their own. Now, uh, when we're dealing with fractions like so, we, what we have here are mixed number fractions. Just some quick terminology. If I have the fraction 1 half, if I have the fraction 3 halves, and I have the fraction 3 and 1 half, uh, this type of fraction here is a proper fraction. Okay, It's a proper fraction because the denominator, which is the bottom number, is bigger than the numerator. Okay, So this is a proper fraction. This is an improper fraction because the numerator, the top number, is bigger than the bottom number. And these type of fractions here can be turned into mixed number fractions like this. 3 and 1 half, this is a mixed number. And you can also write mixed number fractions as improper fractions and vice versa. So this is a skill that you're going to have to do in order to do this problem uh, easily. And I'll show you how to do that uh, right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the problem uh, with these mixed numbers into, or mixed number fractions into improper fractions. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and just do this uh, real quick. So it's, remember, it's 2 times 3 is 6. So we're going to multiply this way, 2 times 3. That's 6 plus 1 is 7. All right, that is our numerator over 2. So this is a skill that you need to uh, absolutely be able to do. Now, a real quick thing, if you're struggling a bit with fractions, so many people have a difficulty with fractions, uh, and you absolutely must correct this. I have a ton of videos on fractions, all things fractions, all things fractions on my YouTube channel. Uh, but if you want a great little uh, basic math course on not only fractions, but um, other things like decimals, basic number operations, place value, check out my Math Foundations uh, mini course. Uh, it's a great starter course for those of you that are looking to improve your basic math skills. You'll find a link to that in the description below. Okay, so 3 and 1 half, we're going to change this to an improper fraction. Again, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 
So that's 7 over 2. And we're going to do the same thing here. 2 and 1 third, that's what? Uh, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1. That's going to be 7 thirds. All right. So we need to understand that. So now we have the problem expressed with improper fractions. This is going to make this problem much easier to do. Okay, so let's go take the next step now. And the next step is going to be for you to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. You have no idea of the positive impact this has on my YouTube channel. I am so grateful to have uh, a lot of subscribers and a lot of views. I look at every person that watches my videos as a math student, okay, or my own personal uh, math student, somebody I get to tutor or teach to, and I take this very seriously. On my channel, if you're new to my channel, you'll find basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. And my objective is to try to teach math in a non-textbook way, right? Who wants to learn math from a textbook? I mean, textbooks are awesome. I collect math textbooks. You know, uh, you know, they're great. But here's the deal. You want someone to translate this information in a clear and understandable way and also emphasize things that are not in textbooks. That's what I try to do on my channel. But uh, your uh, action when you subscribe to my channel really does help me. So anyways, uh, let's move back to the problem. All right, so here is the situation. We have 7 halves squared divided by 7 thirds squared. So again, we're thinking about the order of operations. We have to square these before we can even think about doing division. So what's 7 over 2 squared? Well, that means take 7 halves and multiply by 7 halves. And 7 thirds squared means take 7 third and uh, multiply by 7 third, right? So this is uh, basically the way we want to interpret the problem. Now, at this point, this juncture, a lot of you are going to be tempted to do this multiplication, right? I know what 7 times 7 is. That's 49. Da, 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 da. You always want to hold off, okay? You don't want to do any multiplication. Uh, you, at least you don't want to be thinking to your, yourself, like, I'm going to start multiplying, you know, when you see things written as factors. Hold off a bit on doing that because you can uh, set yourself up uh, if you leave things factored like this, uh, uh, to simplify the problem. Okay, in other words, you're going to make your life a lot easier because remember, in mathematics, you always want to write your answer in simplest terms. Okay, it is a not you know it's not like uh, wrong if you if let's say your final answer is 100 over 200. If you gave this to your teacher, uh, they would probably take some points off. They might take like two points off, and then you would have this very angry face and be like, "Why did you do that, teacher?" Well, they want you to write one half, okay? You always want to write your answers in simplest form, and you uh, it's not really optional, okay? It's like, well, you know, I just like to leave my answers. This way. Well, it's wrong, okay? Always want to express things in simplest form. Okay, so don't start multiplying just yet. So now we have, you know, we're looking at a problem. We're trying to do this in a smart, efficient way. As I indicated, we want to manage this problem correctly. Now we have to start thinking about division, right? So we're dividing fractions. Of course, we need to know uh, how to divide fractions. So how do you divide fractions? Well, what we need to do is uh, go from uh, division to multiplication, okay? And the way we do that is we flip the fractions to the uh, right of the division sign. So here we have two fractions. We're going to have to flip both of these right here, okay? Now, some of you might be a little bit lost with that. So let me just show you here real Let's get rid of some of this stuff right here, okay? If I wanted to do this basic problem, uh, 7 halves divided by um, 7 thirds, I'm going to change the division to multiplication, okay? So I'll keep the 7 halves, all right? And I'm going to change the division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip the fraction the, uh, to the right of the division operator, okay? So that's going to be 3 over 7. Now this becomes a multiplication problem. Now just because this has two factors, this is still a number, so don't let this confuse you, although it is a little bit confusing. It would be obviously easier if you saw this as 7 times 7 is 49 over 9. You just flip it upside down, but just try to, you know, um, think to yourself, okay, this is still one value, uh, and I'm going to flip this entire value here, this fraction, upside down. Okay, and we're going to go from division to multiplication. All right, so this is where we're at next. So now we're going to be multiplying these two fractions. So how do you multiply two fractions? Easy. All we need to do is multiply the respective numerators 
over the de respective denominators. So in this case, it's going to be one big fraction. That's going to be 7 times 7 times 3 times 3 over 2 times 2 times 7 times 7. Okay? All right. Now, at this point in the problem, as I indicated, this is where things can become very, very uh, interesting in terms of making our life a lot easier. We haven't done any multiplication because what you want to be looking for is like factors. Okay. In other words, I want to be looking for the same number in the numerator and denominator. So here I have a seven and I have a seven down here in, in the denominator. These are factors. So I could cross cancel these factors. I have another seven here and another seven here. I could cross cancel these. I'm on the lookout to do this because I'm simplifying the amount of work I actually have to do in the very end of this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual answer. So after cross canceling these sevens, okay, I'm left with three times three, which of course is nine and two times two, which of course is four, which is our final answer. Okay. So I think a lot of you probably do have the skills or the understanding to do all the, you know, work in this problem, but what's going to get a lot of students in trouble again is the management of the problem. You know, are you showing all the steps? Are you taking your time? And again, math is a language. And if you don't practice it correctly, you're not going to get better at it, okay? And, you know, I wouldn't be telling you stuff um, that I don't, you know, there's a lot of things I can't do, all right? I can tell you that right now. One of the things I do pretty well is teach math because I've been doing it for decades and decades and decades, you know, doing math. I, you know, I've made all the math mistakes. I've seen all the math mistakes. I see what uh, works. I see what doesn't work. And I'm just telling you right now, you know, the suggestions I give you or the things I emphasize really will go a long, long way. Okay. So one of the good things you kind of do, or uh, one way you can improve in managing your work better is to, you know, try to make your work look like your math teachers. Okay. Or maybe like my work, right? So, you know, just follow, try to emulate, try to copy, and, you know, over time you'll get better. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.